Sitting in the pilot position for Crew 8 is NASA astronaut Michael Barrett, a veteran of two previous space flights. He will become just the 10th person who will have launched from Earth on board three different spacecraft. The idea of multiple vehicles is just such a positive sign of human spaceflight to begin with. You know, different, different entities, government agency, private agency, different government agency. Uh, human spaceflight is flourishing, and that's a really good thing. His first flight was on Expedition 19-20 in 2009, which lasted from March 26th to October 11th. During his 199 days in space, he performed two spacewalks in the Russian Orlin suit and witnessed the expansion of the station from three to six permanent station crew members. He said leaping from that to now with the coming of commercial space stations is pretty exciting. I flew up with uh, Charles Simonia, who was a spaceflight participant or tourist, if you want. Um, I flew down with Guy La Liberté, the founder of Cirque du Soleil, who had a very different outlook, a very artistic outlook on life. Uh, I loved watching these guys experience spaceflight, uh, and I look forward to expanding that. I mean, it's, it's going to be great because everybody comes down with a different experience. Everybody contributes in different ways. Everybody messages in different ways to people that we may not be able to reach. Um, so it's the right thing to do. And again, we keep finding new things on ISS. We will find new things in this next generation of low Earth orbit platforms as well. After his Soyuz excursion, Barrett's next flight came less than two years later when he launched on one of the final space shuttle flights. We have main engine start. STS-133 lifted off from Kennedy Space Center on February 24th, 2011. And the final liftoff of Discovery, a tribute to the dedication, hard work, and pride of America's space shuttle team. Now preparing to fly on board a SpaceX Crew Dragon for the first time, he says each vehicle comes with key distinctions. There's a lot of common elements, you know, physics uh, transfers quite nicely, uh, but the functionality, the redundancy, the safety, the creature comforts, the human interfaces, all of those are different between vehicles. And I find that personally very exciting to learn those, those differences. Uh, I do look at the legacy though of these vehicles uh, based on time. The Soyuz is a vehicle of the 60s. The shuttle was designed in the 70s and flew in the 80s. And the Dragon is a new generation spacecraft. Uh, I, I joke about it a little bit, but uh, running the Dragon displays is like swiping your iPhone. It's very intuitive. Uh, it is made to be intuitive and uh, simple, um, and it is a great spaceship. And we have huge transparency into how their systems work with SpaceX. So I'm very confident in the vehicle. It's a neat little spaceship. As someone who was board certified in both internal and aerospace medicine, Dr. Barrett literally wrote the book on space medicine. It's called Principles of Clinical Medicine for Spaceflight. And he says going to space himself did give him some important insight. My first flight came several months after the first edition of my textbook came out. And people asked me, did you get it right? And I got it maybe 80% right. Um, and then as time went by, I realized that it was less right because we kept finding new things. And that's still going on. We keep making new discoveries of things we weren't even looking for about the human in space. Because when you take away the dominant force of gravity, you find things you weren't looking for. Um, and, and that to me is incredibly exciting. So armed with that knowledge and two prior space flights, um, I am really excited to watch my own body and, and those of my crewmates uh, adapt, but I, I look at it with a much different eye now. In addition to watching his body adjust to space once again, Barrett will also be eagerly watching out the windows. He and six other members on board the space station will have the rare opportunity to potentially see a solar eclipse from space. I guess that was 2018-ish. Um, I was on Alaska Airlines uh, chartered flight uh, several hundred nautical miles off the west coast of Oregon and uh, we were the first to see that eclipse as it was as the shadow was just speeding hurtling towards the mainland. It was really kind of amazing to see that. Uh, it was literally on my spaceflight bucket list to try to see an eclipse from space. So I'm, I'm living the dream on this one for sure. Reporting for Spaceflight Now, I'm Will Robinson Smith.